Thank you all for inviting us uh, to present uh, our uh, Italian project on Clefstra syndrome uh, that uh, actually is just getting started. We had the kickoff meeting uh, two days uh, ago and the project will last uh, three years. Just a little mention uh, on uh, how the project uh, was born. After two genetic diagnoses of Clefstra syndrome uh, made by our uh, uh, clinical genetics lab uh, in uh, Bergamo, Professor Romano Tenconi from Padua put in touch my director, Maria Iascone, with the Italian Association of Clefstra Patients. And thanks to a long lasting collaboration and uh, our complementary skills uh, with uh, the group uh, of uh, Cristina Gervasini and Valentina Massa at the University of Milan and the group of uh, Donatella Milani at the Polyclinical Hospital in Milan, we devised this uh, project that was uh, founded by our uh, regional foundation of uh, biomedical research. We have uh, three major aims. The first and main one is a, a deep uh, classification, uh, both uh, from uh, the genotypic and phenotypic point of view of uh, all Italian uh, patients uh, in order to set up an Italian registry that will remain a property of the Italian association for any future need. Then uh, we will uh, test uh, in uh, lymphoblastoid cell lines uh, drugs that, known drugs that uh, could uh, counteract the detrimental effect of uh, mutations. And uh, last but not least, we will uh, model a selected patient-specific mutation with a brain organoid for uh, uh, assessing the potential ameliorative effect of drugs selected in the second aim. In particular, the work is organized in six work packages, two for each partner. And now my colleague Federica Gaudioso, who is a medical geneticist at the Pornley Clinic Hospital in Milan, will present the first two work packages. And then I'll be back to present the following ones. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm a clinical researcher working at Polyclinic Hospital of Milan, and our working uh, uh, packages are divided into two steps. The setting up of the registry of Italian patients and the creation of a biobank of immortalized lymphoblastoid cells. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this uh, phase, um, this, these two steps, uh, is just the beginning of the project and uh, we managed to, um, to carry up these, uh, these phases in one year and a half. So uh, the, an important step is uh, the creation of the registry. Uh, this, provide to, um, this is a centralized system and provides two homogeneous data and uh, have three main aims, uh, that is to focus on diagnostic criteria, um, assessing uh, an empirical genotype-phenotype uh, correlation, and this is useful also for prognostications. And uh, we aim also to provide to a well-established sanitary service. Uh, the first step is the, the reaching of clinical data, of course, and uh, we focus on neurodevelopmental aspects especially sleep, behavioral, and the regression aspects, malformation and dysmorphism, and uh, all the, uh, the element chasing or arising during the growth and in adult age. There is an intermedial phase that is uh, the epidemiological study on all these data and uh, the clinical research. Um, the, the last step is, of course, the biobanking. So clinical activity, uh, we managed to administrate a questionnaire about anagraphic, prenatal data, uh, neurodevelopmental disease, and all the functional multisystem disease. And of course, the medical examination about facial features, skin annexa, and all we can reach about a medical examination. And all this data, um, we plan to register on a web-based software named REDCAP, 
dividing for thematic areas, so general, clinical data, instrumental, and genetical data. Uh, this is very useful because uh, with the vertical option, uh, we can add new features and with the horizontal scale, we can uh, update these features. So uh, we can update not only the um, information about the clinics of the patients, but also the structure of the database itself. So the epidemiological study will focus on syndrome incidence and territory distribution. Uh, thanks to Italian Association of Clestra, uh, we uh, know that in Italy there are 50, 60 known cases. We think that the, there are much more. So we plan to contact the bigger center uh, in, um, to whom these patients have uh, been referred to in order to have uh, specific data uh, about incidence and distribution. All this uh, um, is planned to uh, guarantee an healthcare system implementation. So more specific, more specific and uh, more uh, and nearer to these patients. Last step is biobanking and uh, before uh, and during the, the biobanking phases, um, we want to use the, all the clinical data also to clinical research. One example is the comparison between the Clefstra clinical features with the, all the chromatinopathies group clinical features. And we, this will provide also new features to add to implement uh, the database of the registry. And now Laura uh, will explain the other phases of the project. Thank you. Um, thank you, Federica. Does. Uh, starting from uh, uh, the immortalized uh, lymphoblastoid cell lines uh, derived uh, from the second work package, uh, we uh, firstly aim at uh, deeply characterize the genetic imbalances that led to Clefstra syndrome in all patients. We will make this by both long or short whole genome sequencing in order to uh, sequence the brain points and, um, and then we will perform in each patient RNA sequence uh, in order to quantify the levels of the gene product, of the mutated gene product, and also uh, uh, to um, assess the structure of the, um, of the uh, product of this gene. Um, by this means, we aim at stratify uh, the mutation on the basis of their uh, biological effect. Uh, then we will uh, select uh, lymphoblastoid cell lines representative of each type of mutation and uh, we will use them to test known uh, drugs that could counteract the detrimental effect of the mutation in each patient. Uh, at the end, um, um, uh, IPS uh, will be will be generated and starting from these uh, cerebellar organoids in order to deepen the role of EHMT1 gene in neurodevelopmental and uh, uh, in order to understand uh, um, the potential ameliorative effect of previously selected drugs. Uh, this works uh, is based on the hypothesis that Clefstra uh, syndrome could share the pathophysiological pathway with uh, other uh, chromatinopathies that have been previously studied by our group. Indeed, uh, our uh, colleagues uh, at the University of uh, Milan uh, have been studying uh, chromatinopathies uh, for, uh, for a long time, and in the last uh, 10 years, they developed uh, um, in vitro, but also in vivo models uh, to deepen the um, uh, neurodevelopmental defect in chromatinopathies and to uh, test potential therapeutic approaches in syndrome means, such as uh, Rubistenta Ibi and Cornelia de Lange. 
We will know that uh, it, uh, for uh, ultra rare uh, diseases, it could be very difficult to develop a specific therapeutic approach uh, due to the rarity of each single disorder. So in our vision, this project could be a proof for principle of uh, a potential approaching workflow for uh, uh, several rare uh, diseases. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you so much. Any questions? Um, maybe I can start. So for your clinical collection, um, as Ariana presented this morning, the importance of looking very detailed to metabolism and uh, endocrinology. Are you including these studies yes, so to your clinical in investments? We are including all the features, not only um, described for cholestra, but also to other chromatinopathies group in order to have a very complete and big uh, database registry. Also, also to be more adaptable as possible, maybe, f uh, of course, to share in the future and unify with other database. Yeah. So it's useful to, <laughs> to collect these yes. uh, when, once they are in your clinic. Yes. yes. Other questions? Um, I think Dimitris, you had a question on the on the cell lines you would like to collect for the iPSCs biobanking. Could you yeah. comment on what type of cells you exactly aim for? It's a lymphoblastoid immortalized cell. Yes. And do you have experience that you can use these for iPSCs? Well, I, I um, uh, directly don't work to this, uh, the laboring of this cell line, but uh, the colleagues of uh, uh, Gasolini Hospital of Genova okay, and uh, the colleagues of uh, University of Milan are working to uh, create these lines. Um, they choose this li line because it's more um, condivisible. So um, it's available to share uh, biologic material uh, despite uh, whom uh, fibroblastoid, uh, for example, yes, lines. Yes, I understand. But um, as we understood, and maybe uh, Hans or Neil can comment on that, it's very hard to use them for the differentiation and the... Yes. So uh, using the cells, we, uh, we generated iPS cells that was possible, but it was very difficult to then differentiate them in all cell lineages. Uh, so I would be careful with that. Okay, perfect. Um, um, as uh, Federica said, um, our colleagues from the University of Milan uh, will do this part. Uh, they have a long-lasting experience uh, on lymphoblastoid cell lines and this type of approach for Cornelia de Lange and Rubinstein Taibi syndrome. But uh, I will report uh, your uh, suggestion and uh, maybe if you want to um, make in contact with them, uh, they, they will be able to answer your, uh, your question. Yeah. 